In this short video, I'm going to explain to you why your environment will dictate whatever results you're going to get in your life. Why the people you have around you and the influences you take in are a much bigger effect, have a much bigger effect on your success and where you actually end up in life than any other factor in your life. So I'll start out with a very simple uh, explanation for how we actually go, go about taking our, our peripheral vision, taking our hearing, taking all of our senses and making them into actions. So what happens is we have inputs and imagine that in life you have pretty much an, an infinite amount of inputs. There's the, an, an infinite amount of things you can see, you can focus on and our brain has to find a way to uh, to, to see only a small part of that, only the, the relevant quote-unquote part. But, and that part, by the way, is only like 1% of what we actually are taking in. So why would your brain pick one thing over another? How does your brain know what parts to focus on and what parts to exclude from your vision? And again, we're talking about excluding 99% or more of potential uh, things you can focus on and see. Imagine if somebody walks in the room who's depressed, he's gonna see something very different in the room. He's gonna see very different things than somebody who, for example, has OCD, or somebody who's an interior designer, or somebody who's extremely happy, or somebody who has something on his mind. Everybody sees different things. And as I said, basically 99% of that, maybe 99.9, .9, gets uh, filtered. So it doesn't actually get through, and what happens is you only get like, this much into your actual, um, let's say your actual mind, your actual funnel, the actual, the actual uh, uh, perceptions, the mind, the, the thinking, the, the, the part where you actually can work with what you're getting. So you only get like 0.1% of all possible things you can get. <clears throat> and then what happens is those things that you get will dictate your uh, paradigm is basically, I'm sorry, your paradigm is basically how you take whatever you're inputting and then how, what spin are you putting on it? So what am I seeing? And then what do I think? So this is the what, and this is the why. This is actually, what does it mean? The meaning behind what I'm getting. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it moving forward? Does it not? And all this, all this filtering is based on your goals. So if your goal is to get from this side of the room to the other side of the room, what your brain is gonna filter out is everything that's not related to getting over there. So your goals are what basically um, uh, determines what your brain filters and what it doesn't filter. And then your paradigm is about what does this mean for me? Because if your goal is to, for example, make a sale, your brain is going to filter out everything that is not about making a sale. But then if the call goes bad and you don't make a sale, the paradigm will determine what you think about it. So if you have a, a, a good experience, for example, th then if you have a good paradigm, then let's say the call didn't go well, you'll say, okay, this is an opportunity to improve. I'm just starting, I can get better. This is, a, this is part of the process you take it to a positive place. Or if you have a negative paradigm, you can think people are cruel, people are stupid, it's not my fault, it's their fault, or I'm broken, there's something wrong with me. So the paradigm is what happens with the data that you get in, which again is determined by your goals. Now, once you actually uh, determined what this means, okay, the meaning behind what you're seeing, now you're, it turns into emotions so you feel good you feel bad you feel happy excited sad and that in turn turns into action which is the only thing that actually uh, determines what happens in your life so it all ends with action but it starts with your goals what do you actually input your paradigms what emotions it makes you experience and the action now the emotions that part you can't control so that's that's automatic the actions, you can maybe block yourself from taking certain actions or force yourself to take certain actions, but your actions are also automatic because, again, you cannot uh, think of actions from the ether. 
The actions are always in correlation to your emotions, which are determined from your paradigm, which uh, is filtered by what you get from the goal. So if you have the right goal and the right paradigm, you're going to feel the, prop the right emotions that will move you forward, and then you're going to take the right actions over time. So maybe sometimes you don't take the right action, but in general, out of a thousand actions, they're going to be the right actions. Now, how does your environment get into this? What determines our goals and our paradigms is largely our environment. So this part, basically, and this part are both determined by our environment. Our friends, our influences, our, our, the people we look up to, the people we listen to their podcasts, the people that we watch on YouTube, uh, the people that advise us, the people that we work with. All of these people are part of what builds your psyche because we come out as people, we come out very clean in terms of our paradigms. We have certain personalities, that's for sure, but the paradigm comes from the people around you. So if you surround yourself with people that are misers, that are losers, that are, don't take responsibility, it's going to be impossible for you to do that because you're going to see, based on your environment, the goals and the paradigms that you have are going to be very screwed up and it's going to be almost impossible to take the right actions. So you should immediately uh, cut off supply of negative paradigms, negative environments, if you want to move forward in life, if you want to get to some place better than you are. And you want to make sure that you're getting as much positive uh, um, paradigms and goals from people that you look up to. Now, one last point on this is that you don't want to blend communications. So you don't want to have five mentors uh, that each teach you something different about money because what's going to happen is you're going to have multiple conflicting goals, multiple conflicting paradigms, and then instead of having a very clear path, what happens is you're going to go here and here and all the, the actions are going to be very uh, diverse in a bad way because... Uh, one paradigm says you should do this. One paradigm says you should do that. Uh, this goal says you should do this. This goal says you should do that. So you're going to have very conflicting information. And you can have two managers, for example, and both of them have completely different, the absolute opposite attitudes towards managing. One of them is, is a very controlling manager, and the other one is uh, just laissez-faire, just do whatever you think is right, just make sure you earn your bread type of manager. And both of them can be the best managers uh, in their field. But the reason is because they both do what they do very well. But if you take them both and you put them both in a managing position at the same company, the company is going to tank because both of them are going to push in different separate directions. So you want to have just one major, major influence in your life. For me, that is Grant Cardone. And you want to follow that mentor, that influence to the T. Because again, if I listen to Grant Cardone, who talks about 10x and massive action, but at the same time, I listen to somebody like Ty Lopez, who's talking about being very, uh, or Sam Ovens, and they talk about being very precise, very accurate, always focus on your metrics, then I'm getting conflicting information. You can't do both. So pick your mentor, pick your influence, and go from there. And again, try to minimize as much as possible the negative influences in your life, and Use the consistency principle where the more you do something every day, the more it becomes ingrained. So make sure that the negative influences are minimized and whenever and they happen least frequently and make sure that the positive influences, you get them every single day and as much as possible. So that's my tip for you today. If you haven't checked out my book, Evolution of a Maniac, which details my life story, check it out below for $9.99. It's on sale right now and the book will change your life. It will give you tons of examples of massive success and failure from my life and what I learned from it. You can also check out Grant Cardone's products, which I've been obsessively purchasing and investing in for the last four or five years. Both of these in the description. If you haven't liked this video or subscribed to this channel, please do so now if you wanna keep getting those, these types of content. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.